Awesome. Okay. So I'm just looking through this names. We're at 1130 and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to really work hard to take this one hour that we have and just give you as much as I possibly can. So uh, first things first, I'm going to explain kind of why I'm sharing this and to kind of give you a background of what's going on. So I'm going to screen share. I'm going to show you kind of where you're going to be able to go back and find more resources in the future. And, um, and then we're going to be jumping in full force. You're going to be jumping into VR with me and uh, playing. So excited about that. All right. So let me go ahead and let's see if it will let me screen share here. All right. Okay, so first thing I'm going to show you is kind of where to reference back for all of these resources. So last month in the month of March, I did a crazy, crazy, crazy thing. I decided to blog every single day about a different AR or VR tool. And uh, while it was just a lot of work to put together all those blogs, it was just a lot of content to put out. I did it last year and this year. So literally having 31 days both of those times. So looking up new resources from what hasn't been covered and trying to find some updates of things that have come out. So 31 days last month uh, for this year was covered with tons of resources. So I'm gonna show you what some of those resources are. Again, all found on my blog at arvrinedu.com, arvrinedu.com. And uh, first day we went through Merge, just had a webinar not too long ago with Merge, um, Oculus, which I have here with me right now. I'll be sharing that. Um, and then we have Dramatic, Minecraft, uh, Dr. Zeus, ABC books, uh, Mel Science coming in. But if you notice on day eight, I have Mozilla Hubs. And that one is the first time I've ever shared Mozilla Hubs in the past. So I wanted to go in and share how to use it. So if you click on that in my, in my blog, it actually kind of recaps all this. All of these are hyperlinked inside of here. So you can click on any of these and go into the blog about it. My goal wasn't just to tell you, oh, this is cool this could be done, but you know, more of the how to. And so some of the content already in here will be a great reference point for you because while I'm sharing what it does and um, some of the reasons why it's important, I'm also sharing some of the classroom connections and how this could be used in, in, our, in our schools. And this actually came out um, March 8th. So this was right before many of us were on full lockdown. Um, so it was a perfect timing to kind of be experiencing something new. The, on the downside of that, it came out when we were all getting ready to go on lockdown. It was the crisis mode. So because of that, um, you know, it was one of those things that we had to figure out how to navigate this new landscape. And there have been probably a good month, I want to say, everybody's kind of in shock. Everybody's just figuring out, how do I do this? What do I do? How do I meet my students? I don't have time for me right now. I got to focus on this and I'm exhausted. You know, I've been on a screen all day. We're all kind of experiencing that right now. And so how does that all work? But the beauty of this is now I think people finally have caught their breath. Um, identified some of the ways that they can use tools like this and they're ready to jump in, which is a testament to you being here today. So looking at Mozilla Hubs, I did go through kind of the ins and outs of this. And then um, I, I went in and did something a little bit different because Mozilla Hubs is cross-platform, which is why I love sharing it. I have been on many different platforms where you're in a headset and you can connect with other people on a headset, or you're on a mobile device and you can connect with other people on a mobile device, or on, you're on the computer and you can connect with other people on a computer. But having things on multiple platforms, it has to work out that way for our classrooms. It has to work out that way for our students. So really, the base of this is, is having internet access, having a web-enabled device available to you. So having the web then opens up the door for many devices. And so I'll talk you through some of those things and how it can be used. But at the end of the day, I created a space for us. You'll be able to see we're going to go into that space and explore 
And then I went through and did something inside of my headset, my Oculus Quest. I went in and I did a Facebook Live. So inside of the Facebook Live, I was able to kind of walk people through how to use this, what's going on. Um, I, I believe in the Facebook Live, I also joined in on my phone. And so on my phone, I was able to go in and, and be another participant in the group. And so inside of all of that, it made it look like there were two of us there, but it was essentially me showing the two different platforms. It showed what it looked like from the phone perspective and then also from the VR perspective on the headset. So there's quite a few different ways. This is something that I did with my daughter, Hannah. Um, we all call her HD. And so Hannah um, joined in the group with me when we were first exploring with this on our phones. I was on my cell phone, she was on her cell phone, and we were connecting and uh, collaborating. It was great. It was lots of fun, lots of things that you can do inside of hubs just on your mobile device. And I was just trying to get a grip on how to walk around, how to explore, how to learn. So um, in addition to that, after this blog came out, I was curious if anybody was actually joining in because I did give the link to the space that I created. And so in here, uh, people actually did join in and I was able to go out and I put something on you know, Twitter saying, hey, I wonder if anybody's joining me. And sure enough, there are people jumping in and we were talking and collaborating and there were you know, some bugs that were being worked out. This is a pretty new platform. Um, but in light of that, there was lots that we got to do and explore together. So it was great to connect with people that I hadn't connected with before. And then even bring in some people like Mary Alice where we were exploring that together. So um, lots that you can go back through in this blog and have access to. So feel free to watch some of those videos, screen recordings, um, showing the different perspectives, how it works, what it works with. So with that being said, um, I'm ready to bring you right in to Mozilla Hubs. So what is Mozilla Hubs? It is a uh, WebXR. So when we're talking about downloading apps, when we're talking about having to have specific uh, you know, applications installed on your computer, some of those things create problems. We have students on Chromebooks, we have students that um, maybe don't have the right device to be able to function with those particular apps. So sometimes I'll share things I'm really excited about, but I know that it's a limitation for some of our kids because of the technology that they may have access to. Whereas Mozilla Hubs, what I'm so excited about is it really does open up the door for most kids that have um, access to the internet. And so getting that access starts with your browser. So instead of having to download an app, you're literally going to um, a specific website and in that website you're then exploring. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind. I did download something for hubs just to function a little bit better for it to remember my login um, on my Mac. It was a quick install but I am actually not even in that right now. I am just on the web as you can see hubs.mozilla.com up here at the top. So when you first show up there, and, and I'm gonna bring you there in my room, so just hold on just for a second, but before joining in and going yourself, but when you first show up and you're joining in, um, there are some things up top that you need to be aware of. What's new is some of the updates that are coming out. That is important because, uh, for instance, what I said, we ran into some bugs last month. One of the biggest bugs we ran into was audio. So not having headphones in when you're connecting and collaborating and, and it, essentially created an echo. Now they've kind of come up with a workaround around that. I'm just going to give you guys all a chance to know at this point, we're not going to be joining in an audio. If we can avoid it, we're just going to chat and type in as opposed to aud audibly talking just for the sake of this webinar and to keep, because we have so many people joining in to keep things, you know, really at a place where we can, um, just go through the content, understand it. You may not understand every little piece of it. That's okay. We'll follow up later. I'll go through the Q&A. So up at the very top, you see the Q&A open. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to um, put those questions in and I will make sure that here at the end, we have enough time to go through the majority, if not all, and have a chance to answer some of those questions because as you're going through, you probably would just verbally ask me while we're going, and we would be able to do that Mozilla Hubs. But in this particular situation, we're gonna try to just avoid that for time's sake. 
Um, so at this point, we have about 130 people on right now, which is fantastic. I will tell you that Hubs has a limit of people joining in to 50, which is where I set my limit. Um, I had set it at the maximum. Now, just collaborating back and forth with Mozilla Hubs, um, one of the things that they recommended was to try to keep it at the 25, 30 limit, which is probably gonna be the case. Most of you are probably just gonna wanna watch today, um, but even if you are joining in and you are wanting to test this out, there is a, a space in there where you're kind of um, virtual waiting room. So it's you still being able to watch and experience, and I can actually give Give somebody access to be the camera for you so you're watching through their lens and seeing exactly what they're doing so i'm hoping um mary alice doesn't know this i'm hoping mary alice joins in and i can give her those rights to be the camera for those of you in the waiting room so um as we're going through this again feel free to post your q a and uh, and your questions and i will certainly come back to those uh answer as many as i can um, I'm also going to show you one other thing that is creating your own space using Spoke. So here is some updates. We also have our source right here in community. That's a little bit more on the developer side. So I'll just give you a heads up that that's probably not where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, but you know, what's new helps you know any new updates, any new bug fixes that need to you know work be worked out. Um, Docs will give you some of the background information, some of um, more of you know the instructions of how to use Mozilla Hubs. And then Hubs Cloud is brand new. This was just released and it's really more for enterprise. Um, so if you're wanting to do something at, in your corporation where people are actually meeting up in VR, as opposed to meeting up maybe in Zoom, you can actually set this up, customize it and have it private to where all of that information is really just for your corporation. Nobody else has any of that information. So um, Hubs Cloud is looking more on the long the lines of supporting companies wanting to be more independent as opposed to using it the way we're using it right now. So spoke is um, one thing that we're going to be doing in creating. But before we even go to create our own space, I just want to invite you in right now to be able to join my space. Okay, so we're going to go into the 31 days of AR, VR, and EDU. Um, I went in last night just to double check some things, delete some things maybe that people had left over, um, and then also just kind of toy with some new changes that have happened. So in my space, the way it works is you need to join in again by your computer. If you're on a Chromebook, if you're on your um, mobile device right now, you're welcome to join in on mobile. Um, and when you're joining in, um, if you are on a VR headset, that actually is the best functioning, but it also takes up a lot of the bandwidth. So while I can join in and be on my headset, at the end of the day, I also am considering the fact that I'm going to have a bunch of people joining in and when they join in, they'll, you know, have a chance to explore. So I can already see some people joining in the lobby probably because you're on uh, the blog and you already have access to that link. But um, the way that this works is when you first join in, you're actually in the lobby. And the lobby means that uh, it's like a waiting space. I can already see some people joining in, which is fantastic. Um, and for me, I can still from the lobby, I'm not actually in the VR space. I'm just kind of watching and floating and exploring from behind. I can still come in here and chat. So inside of the chat, I can say hello. I can uh, you know, still have it's some interactions and discussions without actually having to enter the room. Okay, now when it says enter on standalone VR, what that means is they're going to give you a link. When you're in your browser, you would go to hub.link. So when I go in on my Oculus Quest or my Oculus Go behind me, um, I would go into the browser, the built in browser. Um, and so when I go into that, I would, let me go ahead and go back. When I go into that um, space, then I would go to hubs.links and then from there go in and use the code that it gave me. So instead of actually installing something on my device, all I'm doing is going into my browser. And once I'm in there in the browser, it automatically allows me to join in. So right now people are joining in. I'm going to go ahead and enter the room so that I don't get left out. Make sure that you have your audio turned off. So I'm going to enter on my screen 
and it's saying, hey, we want access and I can allow that or I can just leave it off. In this case, I'm gonna leave that off, okay? And the reason being is um, right now we're all joining in. We can type in right now. You're hearing me in this presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just enter now. So there is kind of an appearance spot of where you show up in here. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that and how you can customize that as we create and spoke. But um, from here, I literally can click on my screen and drag left to right and look around. All right, I already see mate, hello mate. And we, uh, there are butterflies. And I see some of the names over here that are coming in now. Now by default, Mozilla Hubs is going to give you kind of your, um, you know, pretend name as you're joining in. All right. But when I come up to the top, I can come in here and set my name and my avatar. So instead of being stuck with the name that they gave me, I can change and browse my avatar. I can come in here and accept it. I'm just going to call myself Jamie. Uh, you'll see I'm Santa. So you guys will see me and find me and I'll accept it. But I can go and browse through other avatars like other people are changing right now. So over here on the left hand side, the way that you would then join in is for me to be able to share out with you what this looks like. So um, Up at the top of my screen, I can go to share. If you're on your computer, you're welcome to stay in the lobby or you're welcome to join in. Uh, but just keep in mind, as it gets crowded, it will become a little bit more chaotic. We're gonna be going through the different features in here and I'm gonna give everybody a chance to kind of play. So if you wanna come in here at the beginning and then go back out in the lobby, you're welcome to do that. But this is how you get in. You go to hub.link slash 49 s B, all lowercase, and then a capital B, and then MJ. Now I could tweet that out and invite people out on Twitter and have them join in. I'm not going to do that because they're not actually in the webinar. They don't know exactly what's going on. Um, another way of doing that is having this code that you could just go to hub.link. You go to that code and type that in. It will give you a new code, again, every 72 hours. So it will give you a chance to come in and explore, um, but maybe have that limit of when that refreshes so that you, if you're giving this to your students, they're not coming in and using that at, a, you know, at the wrong class time or the wrong day. All right, I can also come in and embed this. Now that is an important feature because when I embed that code, I can go back to the website. I can actually put in my blog take that code, copy and paste it as an HTML code in my blog. And instead of us actually having to be on um, Mozilla Hubs right now, we would just be exploring and watching the space inside of my blog, which is crazy. Teachers, think about this. If you have teacher websites, if you have um, a way for your students to go to that one page, if you have your own personal website and you have a spot that you want people to come to, you don't want to send them out and have them join, having them join within is really, really cool. So I can get notified, make sure to go ahead and mute that. If you guys can go ahead and mute yourself as you're joining in. I'm hearing a little bit back there. And what I'm hearing right now is actually coming through, not the webinar, but I'm actually hearing it inside of Hubs. I, can, I think I'm hearing somebody right now. So we have a lot of people joining in, which is great, okay? Um, I'm afraid I might even get booted out. So let's hope not because we have so many people joining in. But a um, couple features that you want to be aware of. And the first thing we're going to do, and this is the easiest one that I can give that just to help you know um, how to explore, is inside of here, if you're on your um, computer, push the space bar. And inside of your space bar, you can actually, so I can just, you can see that little white dot moving around as I'm moving around my mouse. There we go. When I push that white, uh, when I push down on my uh, space bar, it gives me some emojis. So right here, you guys are doing great. Guess what? I'm just going to cheer you on because I'm just so excited that you guys, so I'm going to select that. And then there I'm giving you all um, some high fives, some claps, some awesome stuff. And then when I push space bar again, it goes away. 
So you can add some emojis of just letting people know. I see lots of emojis going on right now, which is great. This is kind of a newer feature, by the way. Um, and so lots of people coming in. Look at this group. I'm so glad this is being recorded. Okay. So whoop, close out of that. All right. So lots going on here. The next thing we're going to practice <clears throat> is up at the top a drawing feature. You guys see up at the top of your screen, it looks like a pencil with a line and it's called pen. And when I choose that, I can already see the lines. Do you see all the lines of people right now? I can actually, my line will draw. And so I, it's kind of crazy to use, but I can draw on my space. Now, if I was a great artist, I would do something really cool here. Oops, I keep pulling that up, sorry. I would do some really cool stuff, but since I'm not, I'm just going to, wow, that is bothering me. I'm just going to do something basic. The tongue. Hello. All right. There it is. So there's my drawing and um, I'm going to click back on my, my pen here so that I'm not drawing and I can move around. Now, right now I'm just going left to right. But if I'm ready to move from one spot to the next, if you haven't already figured this out, you can use your arrows. So inside of my arrows, I can go back forth and I can also go left to right. Oh, look at somebody's ready to play tic-tac-toe and I think I might join that one. All right, let me get that corner. There we go. All right, so, <laughs> Let's see who wins, because I'm not competitive at all. All right, let's see. Here we go. I have a funny feeling this might be a cat's game, but we'll see. Okay. All right. It's great because, you know, right now I already see people like using some of these features and uh, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I was hoping for you to be able to connect with some people on here to kind of see and explore. You can see the different characters in here, the different avatars that have been selected and some of the names that people have either kept or decided to change. So um, there it is. So uh, this very well could be a cat's game. Let's see. I think it's the cat playing with me. Is it maybe? No, I'm not sure. Can't see who the arrow's coming from. There's so many awesome people in here. All right, so as we're going through and we're playing, there are some things that you can be doing in here. So if you're trying to explain something and you need to diagram that out, you can use your drawing feature. Oh, guys, make sure you're turning off your microphone, please. Up at the top of your screen, you can see the microphone. Up here, it shows a microphone feature. Just make sure to turn that off while you're in hubs. That way we don't hear me. All right, some, some folks have entered in. Just make sure you turn off that feature. Now, I allowed people to join in and um, join in with their microphones. Um, and. I also gave them access to create move objects, create camera drawings, uh, flying emojis. So just make sure to turn off. Let's see. I think somebody's still in here with their cam with their microphone on. So up at the top, you want to make sure that that's closed out. All right. So I'm going to go back off the drawing feature. All right, can I still hear myself? Okay, good. No, oh, I'm still hearing myself. So somebody out there, one of you inside of Hubs is not muted. And I'm hearing myself, which means all of you are hearing me echo too. So I apologize. Um, okay, so inside of Hubs up at the top, there is a really cool feature. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna find a friend in here and we're gonna take a selfie. 
Okay, so up at the top, do you guys see that camera? If you select the camera, so give you a chance to kind of capture what is going on inside um, of hubs as you are. Okay, great. Mary Alice has let me know there's no echo. Thank you, Mary Alice. Um, so with that, you um, should be able to uh, capture a selfie. Now, right now, you want to make sure how you're aligned. Oh, look at all those selfies. Look, I'm Santa's everywhere. Okay, so here you can stand next to somebody. And then when you capture that selfie, it's actually gonna drop that in the space. Okay, do you guys see right now me? When I selected the camera, there a uh, camera appears on my screen. There's the cat, come on back cat. You're not quite in my space yet. I can see some characters there in the background. And when I'm ready to capture, oh, the cat is looking at me, but the cat needs to come aside me, come beside me and look with me at the camera. I want to, I don't know if that's a cat. That might be an orange panda, something. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So I'm seeing some characters walking around me. I'm going to capture this. So it gives me um, a timer and I'll go ahead and start that timer. Three, two, one, bam. Captures that photo. There we go. It, dee, 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 is the sound you're going to get. And then um, it will show up in the space. There we go. There I am. So there's my photo. Okay. So when I'm done with my photo, I can actually tweet this out. So I know it's just bombarded right now. And I'm just really, this is awesome how great this works. Now, there are quite a few people in the space right now. I'm going to move my, if you notice right now, we have 56, which has actually surpassed how many should be in here. But I think that they are making some people stay in the waiting room is what I gather. I don't see Mary Alice on here yet. Mary Alice, if you are in here, feel free to um, give a name um, or I can uh, look you up. So I'm seeing a few people inside the space. Uh, JAC, so I'm guessing that's Jack. If I come over to Jack, I can actually um, mute Jack, I can hijack, I can kick Jack out of my space if I wanted to. So I can go into the various people inside of here and as the one that created the room, um, I can give different people different rights. So again, I don't see Mary Alice in here and that's fine, but if there is somebody that is willing to be the view for everybody in the waiting room, then I would love to give you, promote you, to be able to share your view for them. So at the bottom of your screen where the plus sign is, uh, go ahead and put in here. Anybody that's willing to um, include their view, their camera view, and I'll promote you. Okay, mate, there you are, mate. All right, mate, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna promote you. All right, so it's gonna ask me, are you sure you're gonna promote that person? I'm gonna say yes, because what I'm gonna do um, is give that person moderating rights as well. So mate, if you notice anybody that's not muted, just mute them. Um, and also I can go in here and um, allow mate to have that view as I'm explaining things. Mate is the one that's sharing that out with everybody else in the waiting room, which is really, that's really cool. Um, all right, so I can already see, if you guys notice up at the top, there were 54 people in here. There are 91 things being built as we speak, okay, or have been built. So what that means is there are 91 things already being put into the space. You guys are already figuring this out. You know why? Because we have all of our GT people in here. That's exactly what's happening. So uh, because you're a go-getter, I'm going to go ahead and show that tool to you first because it is the brightest, it looks the prettiest, it's the magic feature, and that is the create. So that create will actually pull 3D objects, either one that you upload yourself, so if your students are coming in here to showcase the 3D content that they've built, 
they can actually upload that file themselves. Um, if they have wanting to describe something, maybe you're talking about, um, you know, weather, and I'm going to sketch wrap, excuse me, and I want to describe what that weather, those seasons look like. I can go into Sketchfab and I can look up winter and um, have something to describe winter. So uh, Sketchfab is a very common place where people upload their 3D objects. So uh, maybe I'm asking the students to describe winter and what that feels like. So I'm going to take Bongo Cat in winter and Bongo is about to arrive in my space there's bongo and now i can walk around bongo and explore and see what the, oh i already see some folks joining in and sharing out some 3d content now not only does it have to be 3d i can load images um, i can load uh, lots of various different things inside of my space uh, and i'll show you even a way that you can add even something cooler um, but here is my cat Mongo, let's see. When I mean, there's just so many of us in here, so it's running a slower than normal. There we go. So now um, I can take Bongo, I can select Bongo. And when I select Bongo, I can just try and to connect. Let's see. Just giving it a second because it's running kind of slow. I can come over here and um, look at Bongo again and say, okay, this is, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to see. Um, this is exactly the character I wanted. And then over here, I'm going to put my um, space bar on it and I can actually clone it I can, it's kind of hidden right now. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer so you can see everything I can do. It's just running super slow, but I can um, delete this if I don't want to see it. I can track it or focus on it, or I can pin it. Now, down at the bottom, you don't see it quite yet, but down here, there's a circle down here at the bottom that lets it just kind of drop into place. So I was in editing mode by bringing in the 3D object. And then that bottom feature let me kind of drop that into place. I can make that larger or smaller by selecting it. Oh, and I see my video is kind of running a little bit slow probably because I'm just, I'm running this to the complete capacity here. Um, but I can go in here and delete this object and um, interact with it within my classroom. And my students can also interact with it in their classroom. So I'm going to show you one last feature inside of Hubs, and then we're going to go into creating. Up here at the top, the far left, you have a screen share or a uh, share camera. So if I come over here to screen share, I can actually show you as if I'm giving a presentation right now. So I can do, um, maybe I wanna show you the 31 days of AR, VR, and EDU recap. And that's the one I wanna demo. So right now in the space, there is the website. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm hearing myself giving some feedback here um, because it is, uh, I'm hearing somebody's echo from their microphone. So um, here I can go through and share with a classroom. If I wanna do my own presentation, I could do that. And so as I'm sharing this out with my classroom, they can get closer or farther away to come and see. I can also, if I wanna share my presentation, I can do that. I can also come up here and say, no, I'm gonna share my camera. Okay, Mary Alice is saying she's here in the echo now. So <laughs> make sure you are muted up top. 
should be muted up top. And I'm just gonna write in here, please mute. Okay. Okay, so here is my camera. So if I am sitting here in virtual reality with people, not only can I sit here and talk to those people and interact with those people, they can hear me, we can discuss, we can draw together, we can build together, uh, we can take capture what we're doing together. And by the way, you can also capture video. Perfect. So um, with that, this is uh, a, a spot that I can choose. Now me trying to screen share, I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing here. So there's quite a bit of things that I can do and I apologize for the echo. It's somebody else's in the room without being muted. And I can't, I can't go through the whole group right now and see who that is, but um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off of hubs. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going back to hubs.mozilla.com. And it gives me a chance to see again where my space is. Right now there's 25 people in there. They've all been able to go in and draw, uh, interact, um, do 3D objects, take selfies, leave emojis, um, screen share if they wanted to, as well as sharing their video. Now, people that were probably trying that may have been our problem, so I apologize if that was just too much to handle at one time, especially me trying to um, screen share and, uh, and do a live broadcast with you right now as well inside the webinar. So, all right, I do want to make sure that I come up here and show you what to do in Spoke. So this is now you watching. So I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you through how to customize your space. Because when you first come in to Hubs, what you're gonna notice is create a room. And when I create a room, it gives me one of their default rooms to choose. So that create a room brings me in to this space here. Now I'm in the lobby right now. But if I come up to choose scene, I can come into these basic scenes that have already been established and created for you. So if uh, we wanna go to a coffee shop, if we wanna go to a peaceful mountain village or winter cheer, which most of us are ready to get rid of at this point. Um, and so we're ready to maybe go on a maze and go and explore. So we can go into any of these spaces that have already essentially been created um, within the team or by others. Um, you can even go into my scene. So remember I created this space for us, the AR, VR, and EDU fun. So I've also created a space with Mary Alice where we went in and created some content in here, as well as um, an AR, VR, and EDU space of just exploring and creating. So what this does is I can come in and easily have um, some scenes that have already been created for me. So it's, it's really nice. I'm going to go back until we get back to where we were. So I can invite people in just by choosing create room. You have had to make nothing. You literally can choose one of those, just like I did. Go up and share up at the top of your screen that code or that link or even embed code into your website. So you have those three options to share with anybody to join even right now. But one of the things that you can do is now go in and customize your own space. So right here under spoke, you're going to have the option to go in and redesign whatever space you want. So they're going to give you a chance to go in and um, pull in video content if you want, pictures, you can uh, rearrange your seating, uh, which we're not seating. So it's funny to have seats in a spot like this. Like I, I just think it's like we want familiarity, right? Um, but that gives you a chance to go in and create. So I'm going to choose by getting started. Now, again, these are the spaces that I've already created. I'm going to choose new project just so I can show you from start to finish what this looks like. So I can take 
what has already been designed right now and make it my space. I can customize it, recreate it, change things up. Um, or I can just start with new empty project. Okay. And actually it will look like this with the creator. That's what it will start off looking when you first arrive. So this new empty project is starting from scratch. So this character right here is called the spawn point. Remember when I said you would just magically appear inside of your space and I said I would talk a little bit more about that. The spawn point is where you move wherever you want the people that are first arriving in, the cl in your class, in your VR space to arrive. So that could be anywhere kind of like in co-spaces, your camera view. Where do they first look when they show up? So that is that space that you have for them. So that spawn, that spawn point is uh, somewhat important just to be aware of like where you place things in the space to make sure you're not placing things in a, in a weird space. So um, my assets over here can be things that I've uploaded. I can upload images. And just to give you guys a little bit better view because this is small, I'm gonna move this up, which makes that space look a little bit different. To know how to navigate in here, I can click and drag around on the plane. So I, I click somewhere and then I move from left to right on my trackpad and I can see this space. Now, I can add in and upload my own 3D models. I can upload any images or videos or even audio that I might want. Um, so any of this is available to you for you to upload those items into your personalized space. Um, now over here on the left side gives you kind of some architecture. So when you saw some of those spaces being built, they may have started with flooring and then they moved to windows and walls and even ceiling. Um, you also have some spaces, maybe some outdoor areas to go and explore with rocks and such. So there's some kind of uh, semi-categorized -categor areas for you to explore with. Now Sketchfab, again, is going to be one of those places as well as Poly, Google Poly, to pull from uh, to be able to get some great 3D objects in your space. So if I come over here in Sketchfab and look under categories, I can look under featured. Um, I can look at vehicles. So if we're going to do a car show and we're going to talk about different eras of those cars and when they took place and what kind of technology was available to them, um, how quickly, the speed, um, its pros, the cons, problems. So all of that could be done in a display in this virtual reality space as kids are walking and exploring around and maybe they're leaving thoughts and maybe they're leaving information for you as well. Or maybe they're the ones that are giving, delivering the information. They have brought in their vehicle that they've customized or made or they brought in a vehicle that's already been made and they're the ones that are delivering the information. So you're inviting parents in or community in and your students are the presenters in this virtual reality space. So it's super unlimited how you can run with this. Um, but I'll go ahead and go to vehicles and then you can see some of these vehicles that you might wanna load and items that you might wanna have. Um, some, you know, better than others. Some are very detailed, some are realistic, some are not. So it just depends on, you know, where you're looking and what you're trying to do here. So I can come over here to science and I can, under that category, I can see what content out there. Um, if we want to bring in the coronavirus and that's our discussion for the days to talk about it. It has, you know, dealing with emotions of it and discussing kind of on the social emotional side how we're dealing with this, but looking at something makes it less scary than talking about it as this unknown. So giving students a chance. Now I can also go to places and see kind of these spaces that I might want to upload like, um, here we go, the mill. That looks great. So I'm gonna tap on the mill and I say, oh, I'm bringing my students to the mill. And um, by bringing it to them, I then can place where I want it to be. Let's say I want it there. Now, the main thing you're gonna to wanna to be aware of is over here on the left-hand side. Now, this is basically moving it around, that translation, right? So I can move it from left to right, up and down, uh, forward and backward. Rotating is next, so I can rotate it around and decide which direction I want it to face. And scaling is another big feature. So these are kind of the three buttons you're probably gonna use most inside of here. So when I go to scaling, I have to drag up or down from this white box. So when I drag up, 
makes it large. When I drag down, it makes it smaller. Now I remember my person, my spawn, person that's arriving, would arrive literally inside of there. So I may move my, so again, I have to come over here to translate that. I have to take my spawn, let me try to zoom in and zoom out just a hair. I may take that spawn point or I may take my um, item that I just added. Okay, the mill, and I may move the mill out of the way just to make sure that my spawn is arriving where I want it to arrive. Okay, so um, with that now, I can place this object, I can rotate this object and move around that object wherever I want it to go. I can rotate it. I can even, believe it or not, have a whole place that, let's see, no. I'm gonna move it up in the sky. So when somebody arrives, they'd have to fly up and go and find the mill. So I can have a whole space station of content if I wanted to. Um, and I'm moving my terrain here. I'm gonna actually move down. One more time, there we go. And I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna move up that they're at the right space. Now, I'm pinching and zooming in on my trackpad to go in and out, just so you know. Um, so here it is, Oh, you know, whatever you're choosing, you're able to move it, you're able to modify the size, you're able to rotate it around, and I'm done. So if this is all I'm bringing my students to and letting them go in and explore and discuss and bring in their own 3D objects, which by the way, if I'm in my space, I can actually still upload the mill from Sketchfab on the fly. I didn't have to do this beforehand, but it is nice to bring them to a place, that a uh, workable space that you wanna bring them into and let them explore from there. Now, all I need to do is publish to hubs. Now, I only added one thing, by the way, I can add multiple things. I can come in here and add people, I can add some nature, um, I can have music playing. So lots that I could do, I'm keeping it again, simple. I published to hubs and this does take about a minute or so to uh, finish and I'm going to just go ahead and say the mill as my space and I'm going to save my project. Now saving the project then makes it one of my spaces. Remember we had an AR, VR and EDU space. We had a space for Mary Alice. We had um, the 31 days of AR, VR and EDU that, uh, that we all went into. All of those spaces were available. Now the mill is going to be something. Now, attribution, by the way, I didn't create the mill. You didn't create the mill, more than likely, right? Um, that was created by somebody and published onto Sketchfab. So they are going to be attributed, by the way, for that content. Now, if Mary Alice and I are coming in here and we need to, I need to say, well, Mary Alice was part of this and maybe I'm going to allow her to have her name on here because I uploaded her 3D content. Um, but I can give some access also for remixing. So I could take that scene and let other people use that scene so that they can run with it. Um, I can allow Mozilla to promote it if I wanted to, but at the end of the day, pretty much my basic is just naming it. So I'm gonna save and publish. And when that's done and it publishes, um, I'm able then to create that as my space that I invite everybody to, just like I did with the last one. So um, I'm gonna publish my scene and I'm fine with uh, where it's at as far as it's basically, this is more on the developer side. It's talking about kind of how uh, detailed the graphics on here, um, how that's gonna look in that scene. I don't have any changes that of course that I'm gonna make on my end. So I'm fine with that being uploaded. And when that's done, you can see right now that percentage as it's going through, Again, it does take a few minutes for it to finally publish. And there it is. Now we're gonna go in and view our scene. This is what it looks like now.
So remember when I told you I'm kind of, uh, I'm outside kind of looking in, I'm gonna create this room. I'm happy with it. This is what I wanna use. This is where I wanna invite you all to, which I'm not going to right now. I'm not even gonna show it to you guys because we might crash it again. Um, but um, I can come in here and I can invite people in to enter the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and just enter the room and I'm gonna enter on my screen and I'm certainly not gonna have my microphone on there, okay? So um, I'm gonna keep that muted and then I'm gonna enter now. I remember where I spawn, where I show up in the scene is gonna be important. So um, where I arrive, hopefully that will show up. Might be where I showed up. I should be able. I'm trying to come in and come out. Let's see. And by default, by the way, that is 24 in there. Um, room and scene information. Yeah, that's my scene. I might be stuck in the water in there. So. I might have made my spawn get stuck in that water. That's unfortunate. Okay, or I might have to go back out, but I'm gonna come over here and just choose a scene again. And I'm gonna to go to my scenes and see if it lets me jump in in the mill, or if I still show up as uh, stuck in the spot, which very well could have been the case. And I'm, there are some keys that I can use to kind of move around or look around and at this point, it's just showing up empty. So I'm gonna just go ahead and come out. That is how it's done. And I should have never moved my spawn character because now I, I'm stuck, but that's okay. All right, so going back to hubs.mozilla.com. It will show up as a new room. Now I categorize this room, my room, um, as my favorite here. So that way I am able to, um, you know, reference back to that. I still see 13 of you still in there right now. Um, I can come over here to create that room. Um, I can look and see based upon creating a room, it will let me look at the different rooms that I have. If I want to change my scenes, the ones that are already in there. So I can go into all of that. So again, this is a space that is, available for me to invite people in. I can enter that room. Um, and once I enter in, I can then share just like we did before. So I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing because we are just about at the end of this right now. Let's see. There we go. And out of you that have lasted through the end, I apologize because I think at this point, my Q&A may have gotten deleted from before. So I apologize if I missed your Q&A from before, but I'll go ahead and see what we have. All right, how safe is this to use with students? That's a great question. So because this is not something that somebody is, I mean, to type in that code and find it in Mozilla Hubs at this point is gonna be quite a challenge. There's just not enough people using it. It's just brand new. Um, uh, but that is something that you may wanna keep in mind that, that you could boot people out just like you could boot people out here in Zoom. Um, and you could invite people in and kind of have it up public and people joining in. So you're kind of opening up the doors. Now, I think that's why Hubs Cloud is coming out is that it's gonna be a little bit more private as far as who can join and how they join. So keeping all of that in mind, that's certainly something. Um, so let me just say, um, that's certainly something that you want to be aware of so that uh, you are protecting your students as they're joining in. But essentially it's about as protected as you are on the Zoom call or you know, webinar or Zoom calls that you have with your students or Google Hangouts that you have with them and whatnot. So uh, the different tools that you're using right now are gonna be similar to what you would face within Mozilla Hubs. Good question. All right. So um, I'm trying to host a poster session on Mozilla Hubs. Awesome. And um, okay, the hearing and speaking. So the microphone, uh, what I would recommend is if you're gonna do this with a group and you're gonna be meeting inside of there, of course, for me, I'm 
doing some professional development for you guys. So it's not like, hey, let's go in and just meet up and chat and we'll talk. Um, but instead, we're actually um, describing how, you know, I wanted you to have, be equipped to know how to use it, the ins and outs of hubs and the basics of it. Um, but within the hubs, I would highly recommend that everybody have headphones. That is going to be your best bet if you have people coming in and joining and doing more than just chatting, but instead being able to speak to one another. So um, that was the bug that I was talking about earlier uh, that we faced. So just keep in mind that that is something that you'll want to prep those people joining in and out of. Today, I plan to just tell everybody to mute themselves so that we didn't run into that. Um, and you know, just people being aware of how to turn that off. Now, I could have went through that list and spent the time going through and muting everybody. That would have taken a little bit of time, but um, you get the point. That's essentially how that worked. So um, it is somewhat of a problem. Now, what Mozilla Hubs, and I'm just going to tell you from the Hubs perspective, what they have is kind of a way to avoid the echo that you might hear. And they said inside of the chat, you can type in, and I'm looking it up because he just sent it to me yesterday. In the chat box, you can type in audio mode. So when you type in audio mode, one word, um, it should actually eliminate some of that problem that you're hearing if you're not using headphones. So there, there's that, so thank you. All right, is a student sign-in required? No. They, it is not. Uh, just as you all joined in, you were able to join in and share without running into um, logging in. You are anonymous. So uh, that could, you know, that could be something you want to establish with your students as you're inviting them in or with your staff as you're inviting them in that maybe that they would identify themselves in one shape, one way uh, or another or allow them to remain anonymous is completely up to you. Um, the cost for uh, cloud hubs cloud is really more of the enterprise cost. It's not made necessarily for classrooms. So I think that you're going to be dealing with costs that aren't quite what we want to see for classrooms, but this is a great chance for you to connect with them and give them some feedback. I'm sure they'd love to hear that. All right. Does this work better in Firefox? Great question, Pablo. All right. So um, I am using it in Chrome. I've also used it in Safari. I have not noticed a difference, but I haven't had Firefox for a long time installed on my computer. Um, so I have not tested it out with Firefox, but when I first saw Mozilla was doing hubs, I also thought I had to have Firefox. I have it on my iPhone uh, because I've used some various uh, WebXR content on there, but I've never had it installed on my computer for years. So that's a great question. And I would love to see that answer maybe from you. I'd love to see what you find and please share it um, on social media so we can share it with each other. All right, what is a code? So sorry, that one came a little bit later. We did get that on there and it is recorded. I will be combining the two videos because I got booted off of uh, Zoom there shortly. Um, but that's okay because we got back in there and I'll take those recordings and I'll bring that all together to share out with everybody. Just make sure you're subscribed at arvrinedu.com. So that way you can get that available. You'll get notified. You'll get the content to go back and reference back to. And of course, you'll also be invited to participate in a lot of different areas as well. So um, I apologize. I didn't get that code. Uh, can you make it by invitation only? Um, I have not seen that as an option yet, but that's a great idea. Um, Kel, I think that that should be recommended and probably is what's happening in Hubs Cloud in the background right now. I think that's the only thing that is happening. So that's a great question. Why are some of them not loading correctly? Um, it could be their computer, it could be the device that they're using, it could be their internet speed. So depending on how they're joining in, uh, the capabilities their device has as well as, now if I'm on VR, you can actually see my hands moving because I have controls moving. So I'm able to modify and work with things much smoother and easier inside the headset. I can hear people easier. I'm able to turn around without moving a mouse. It is a much smoother experience, but um, I did not want to take up the bandwidth for that, but keep that in mind, depending on the device they're joining in, and uh, what type of uh, capabilities that they even have bandwidth wise. I think all of us are facing that right now. I think I got booted, which would never happen normally, 
because we are all having to be on the internet. We are all pushing the limits of what we are doing right now by working from home. So that's certainly something we all have to keep in mind. Okay, I apologize, Teresa. Hopefully you were able to join in, but guess what? On my blog, you can still join in. You can still go in and explore, watch this video later, and then follow along and go inside that room. That room's open all the time for you. So thank you. Um, how do you erase things you drew? So you select, uh, you kind of hover over with your mouse. It shows a little white dot. You hover over whatever that item is, push your uh, space bar, and it allows you to delete. Now, I was having a hard time showing you all that because we had so many people in and exploring, but um, that is something that it, you can go in and delete things, adjust things, make it larger, smaller, uh, move things around. So all of those features are all done by pushing the mouse button on your computer. STL files, I believe so. I would think STL files would be a standard. Um, I have not uploaded my own files yet, but I would think that that would surely be available. So for sure, Megan, um, it lets you do pings and JPEGs and um, there, there's lots of file formats that you can upload inside. So I can't imagine that STL files wouldn't be one of them. Can, you, can they create 3D content inside this platform? or only bring it in. So you're bringing in 3D content and you can combine 3D content that's already been built and you can bring in item by item. So technically you can create, but it's not like it's combining all of that together. So really where you're gonna find is that you're building outside, uploading it into Poly or Sketchfab. Um, and then from there, you know, uh, interacting with it. So. Great question, Danielle, um, but technically yeah, we're pushing it by saying yes, if that's the case. Uh, VR headsets, yes. So what I have used it on is the Oculus Quest, on the Oculus Go, on my mobile device, on a Chromebook, on a Surface, on a MacBook. So um, there's quite a bit that you can use that on, especially on VR headsets. It just has to have web enabled, so it has to have a browser. So as long as it has a browser, yeah, you can join in. Um, can you embed in Schoology? Ooh, good question. So um, Corey Hall asked, can we put that into Schoology? So the embed code depends. If Schoology allows you to have embed codes and work inside, yes. If not, then um, you'll want to put in the link is probably your best bet. So a lot of the LMSs most likely are going to function in that way. Um, with the link, but if you have the capabilities of embedding, I just don't know. I, I haven't been familiar enough with Schoology to know yes or no for that, but if it allows you to embed code, then absolutely. All right, so uh, I was in the hub, brought in a hamburger, wrote a J on the door of the house, I lost my connection. When I entered again, the hamburger was gone, as well as the writing, do things save automatically? Some things, yes, you have to pin it. Great question, Lisa. So if you actually um, push your space bar on those items and you pin it in the space, then yes, it will remain. But when you leave, if you didn't pin it, then yes, it will be gone. Excellent question. Um, way to erase is your space bar. So definitely use your space bar as you're hovering over those items. Um, classroom environment, how long? I mean, what I showed you and spoke, I did pretty basic. Most of our time wasn't spent doing stuff it was me explaining just so you knew what was capable um, but ultimately this is something you can do very 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 easily um, even using the spaces that they've already built for you um, how do you scale to a specific scale so you would have to drag and drag it out as you scale things up or down it's kind of tricky using the space bar and then you swipe up or down with ever whatever object you're bringing in um, but no specific number that you can scale a percentage unless you're in spoke. All right, this would be really uh, engaging for students to use. Whew, yes. Um, I mean, ultimately, this is a meeting space. This is a meeting space for your kids at a time that they really need to have some more interactions and engagement. The door is open to however you want to use this. So it's not that it's necessarily saying by using hubs, you've hit this standard, but instead this is a access point for you to connect with your students and whatever you want to do inside there is an open door, just like your classroom is. Your classroom is the avenue of which you all meet and this, this is your virtual classroom that you can invite them in. So great question. All right. I see, oh man, I wish I can go through all these questions. Uh, Google Sites, Adobe Illustrator, um, all of that should work um, great. 
you're bringing in that content with you. Um, you should be able to pull in links and uh, video. Absolutely, you can pull in video from YouTube if you wanted to. Um, you can upload video. Uh, Rift, I'm not a fan of Rift in the classroom. I think the Rift is cool. Um, I, I personally prefer the Go in the classroom because it's standalone, so it's a lot more customized. So I'm seeing a lot of stuff about Tinkercad, creating a Tinkercad, great. Um, the emojis. So yeah, all you have to do is push down your space bar and then with your mouse, select which emoji you wanted. It shows up for as long as you let it. And then when you push your space bar again, it goes away. And this, it says, is there a free version? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't told you guys this. Yes, everything we just did is completely free. The only paid for version that you're gonna see in there is going over to Hubs Cloud. So that's where it's kind of like the enterprise side of it for your company, your corporation. Um, so yes, everything free. So awesome. All right. I first grade, uh, grades level specific. Can you have very large, if you're in hubs, I think you can have larger groups, uh, hubs cloud, excuse me, but traditional hubs, the really, the ideal would probably be up to 20, 25. Um, and then as you saw that we all experienced, we ran into some different, um, problems too. So I wish I can go through, I, I tried to answer kind of the most common questions that I saw kind of repeating and, and things. Feel free to reach out to me if you guys want to connect, but I do want to show one other thing before we're done because I think this is something you'll want to be aware of. Tomorrow um, I'm going to be connecting with Mary Alice and we are going to be doing a um, a webinar tomorrow. So Mary Alice, if you're still on, please share the link. Um, I can also come over here and share that. And uh, let me copy that link address. I'll put it into our chat. Um, but this here is going to be a way for you to connect digital citizenship, which is obviously the first goal before we ever jump into all of this and um, how we can use augmented reality within that. So tomorrow we are doing a webinar. We'd love for you to join us. And um, I will put that in our chat right now so that you hopefully can join us and participate. Feel free to register again for free. And Mary Alice will be joining with me and we'll be sharing out some really cool ideas of using this um, for your students. Uh, sending out PD certificates. I do. Thank you, Edgar, for asking. So I do have um, a certificate that I'd be happy to send out to you that I can customize. Just send me an email and um, I'll go back on the webinar to make sure that uh, it shows that you were active in the webinar. And yeah, we'll be good to go. All right. Thank you guys so much. I've went seven minutes over my time, but 82 of you have remained on regardless. You are incredible. You guys, if you feel like, wow, that's so much, Jamie, I will share this with you, don't worry. But then also on that blog, I talk through many of those things with you on here as well. Um, so it gives you the live video that was recorded on face, Facebook Live, and then also some video content so you can see how things were made inside the spoke and such. So um, hopefully this gives you a lot to work with. It's such a crazy time. And I really appreciate you guys taking your time out to come and learn with all of us. So. Um, thank you again. I hope all of you have a wonderful Thursday and, and I really hope to see you guys tomorrow um, at the next webinar. Thank you guys.